All right, let's continue with the challenge week breakdown. Uh, if you've been following the series, uh, you already know that today's day three, which is when we're going to talk about the core functions of our app because we already uh, covered how to come up with ideas and do research. And we already started doing some work on the initial setup and planning of the project. So today's when things are supposed to start becoming more fun, right? Well. Uh, I wouldn't say that necessarily. It really depends on the type of person you are. Uh, because when building the core function of your web app, 99% of people that are new to Lovable or any AI coding tools make the exact same mistake. They start focusing on the design and the nice stuff too early, uh, micromanaging small tasks versus leading a project, which is, I think, a mindset shift that you will need to take from day one to make this process easier for you and especially not following the plan that they themselves laid out initially, right? So our whole session yesterday was about planning. A lot of people just dive in head first, right? So when you think about your time distribution for day three, even though I said we're going to get our hands dirty, it's more about uh, getting your hands dirty with thinking, reading, and talking, which is about 75% of what you should be doing and then only 25% with coding, so to speak. But in the end, you're not the one writing the code and you should never think about yourself as the person who is supposed to write the code here. You're supposed to lead AI into doing that for you based upon your needs, right? When you think about what are my needs, right? Before you even begin building, there are a few things that you will need to define on the morning of day three, which is, and, and it starts with now that I got everything set up, like, do I need a backend? Like, am I going to need to record any user data or store any data uh, for my project? And for most of you guys, the answer is yes. Uh, obviously, because you store user data, you need to allow users to sign up. So you will probably need user authentication, right? Um, then you, you're probably going to ask yourself, okay, what's my ambition right now with this project? Do I want to immediately start having free, uh, meaning basic uh, uh, and, and premium users? And if yes, then that already changes the mindset of like, what's the next step, right? Um, the fourth question that I usually ask myself is like immediately, am I going to need AI integration of any kind, right? Will this be an AI powered app? And especially is AI going to really benefit the end user? Because right now I think we're all driven to integrate AI and then Think about, how, you know, how is it going to benefit? I would go the other way around, like thinking whether it will give any benefits and then in, decide to, whether to integrate or not. I'm, I'm leaning these days more onto the edge of not integrating it because I feel for a lot of apps, it really has no additional use and increases the building complexity for no reason. Uh, and then, but that said, uh, there are tons of other APIs aside of OpenAI that your app may be, um, useful to have. So uh, you should always think about and do research, meaning communicate with ChatGPT on getting that piece of information, what API will you need, and immediately sign up for it, create the account, create the credentials, create the API key so that you can move forward, right? Um, and then once we got all of this figured out, we can proceed to build core functions and integration. So in, in this case, Connecting with Superbase, which is your kind of default backend when you work with Lovable, uh, building user authentication in it, um, creating edge functions so that you can make API calls to open AI uh, or any other custom API pretty much, uh, defining user roles and protected routes. Uh, I, I want to say, like, do not do this unless you really need to, like, build for your MVP, you just want to build one user level, don't try to mix things up on your first build with like, oh, I want the admin, the creator, the the, the manager of the project, because that's really going to make it hard on you to, to continue building initially. And then obviously you want to build just pages and navigation so that there's an, a, a, an app flow that's being followed according to your plan. Then obviously once you got that figured out, uh, optionally we can talk about integrating Stripe. Let's first continue with this core thing of like, which I mentioned being a mindset shift because everything else I think is irrelevant at this stage. And let's go back to where we stopped yesterday. 
So if you recall the video, or if you watched the video yesterday, we've asked uh, Lovable to read all the documentation that it, that it was provided and provide us with uh, a confirmation that it has a project understanding and that it understands the implementation plan and that um, you know it has some concerns and it asks me some clarifying questions. Like so, again, instead of just going out there and trying to build some stuff, I started talking with it first, right? Answered all of its questions, and then concluded with asking it to revise the plan based on my answers, and then tell me what it wants to do, right? So Lovable then smartly built a phased uh, uh, staged uh, plan, which usually does it in you know five to seven stages, and I then instead of just saying okay, let's proceed with the revised plan, continue to ask it to explain me the first phase, right? So I'm still in the process of playing again. Make that mindset shift as early as possible. Don't rush into building. Work together with Lovable to break things that things down into smaller chunks, right? So expanding on phase one, and then asking it so that it breaks and that breaks it down into step by step, right? Which then builds the project foundation for me that I can very easily reference and follow. And then from that point on, instead of saying code this, do that, all I do as its manager is I'm saying to proceed with step one of phase one, right? If there's an error, usually you will be able to click on it and fix it. We're going to cover that in tomorrow's video in more detail. But as you can see, for the most part, all I'm doing is I'm telling Lovable to proceed with different steps of the first phase. And it's just building and building and building stuff out. So yesterday we ended uh, our journey, I believe, with this page, right? We just had the index page and it was very basic, right? And so a lot of you would at this stage be very compelled to start saying, okay, let's change this image. Uh, let's build a better uh, above the fold. Um, I don't like the paddings and the margins and the hover effects. There's no footer. And you would immediately get sidetracked then and there, right? I, I don't allow myself to do that until basically day five. So no design work until day five. That's the last piece of the puzzle that I'm touching, right? The first piece usually is something that also Lovable would recommend you do uh, very early on is connecting with Superbase and basically uh, building the back end of things. Um, so Superbase, you know, I'm, I'm not going to cover account and project creation because it's very intuitive um, for anybody that's even remotely technical. You just built a project. Once you create a project, you would then go to Lovable and then just click on this Superbase button and because my project's already connected, I can't show you that, but the model's really simple. It will just reference your organization, your project, you just click connect, and from that point on, Lovable will continue to work with that backend database, right? And we will we can see that happening um, here, right? Uh, and at one of the, the stages right here, right, where we're uh, integrating uh, Superbase authentication, right? And then I just ask it to add Google authentication now as well. So this is the 25% of coding that I do, right? As I said, I, I talk to it, right? This is the talking part, right? Where I ask it stuff. This is the thinking part and uh, implementation part, which is the 50% of the work that I do. And then I only... Uh, I only basically spend 25% doing stuff like these, which are like small tweaks, right? Now, we by following this plan, I was able to get the project from basically just having a landing page to a point where now there is a user signup sequence and uh, an entire project being built out, the entire wireframe for all the menus. So I did not, dictate the design. I did not do anything. As you remember, we built the implementation plan, the design guidelines, and had Lovable reference them. And based off of those, 
it built all of these wireframes. So I did not have to tell it what type of buttons to use. And as you can see, there are some pretty big bugs, but they're design related, right? Like these hover effects or stuff like that. But what the goal of day three was for my project, at least based on my plan, right? A very important thing to remember following the plan, right? Lovable decided that it's best that it builds the wireframes and then plug in the real data. For some of you, or for most of you all that are building these projects, it will kind of be the other way around. You will connect Superbase and Lovable will immediately want to build tables, to build user profiles, to do that work first. Well, let it do its thing. Just follow the plan, right? Um, so as you can see, it built a content editor that is working, right? Um, it built the ability for me to uh, look at the posts, kind of preview them. Um, in here uh, that can be italic, bold, we add different types of tags. And there's always going to be a bug here and there. That's uh, pretty expected. But as again, that is something that you're fixing on day five. You're polishing it later down the road. What you're trying to do now is you're trying to get your app to work according to the plan. The one thing that I do want to cover in this video is uh, connecting with OpenAI and building an edge function. So I'm just going to go right here. And again, I will assume for the purpose of this video that you could know how to uh, go to platform.openai.com slash API keys, basically creator account so that you can create a secret key. So this is going to be a secret key for uh, headless CMS, right? And I'm just going to create a secret key, copy the key, and then uh, I will go back to Lovable and integrate it with uh, OpenAI. So as you can see here, right, we had that scheduled as phase four. So the one big mistake, again, that I will make intentionally here uh, to cause some bugs and then cover that in the next video is I'm going to skip phases. Uh, uh, phase one is done. I think phase two is sort of done. Um, and then uh, phase three is, I think, somewhere halfway. So I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to do it just so that I can show you how it's done. So we built the secret key. And then all the only thing that I did is like I typed this part right here. I want you to skip over to and then skip over to and. And proceed with base four. And then I just literally copy pasted this. Right. So I will just let AI do its magic for a second there. And as you can see here, before it even starts, it wants me to add the API key. So this is how you properly do this process, right? Instead of typing in your key in your chat or anything like that, you're storing it safely as a secret in Supabase. I'm going to show you how that looks like once it's done in your backend. It's very easy to get sidetracked. So again, because we switched gears, sometimes when that happens, what you want to do is this. You want to go back to the, the last minute that you talked with it about the revised plan. Sometimes it's even easier to just, and that's what I would usually do. I would just take this, the minute it's created and just, you know, dump it into like a, a, a note, notebook or notepad somewhere on, somewhere on the side, right? Like a Google Doc, whatever. Just move it away so that you can reference it. And then I would go here and say, okay, this was our original plan. And then I would just paste it into this prompt and then do this, right? Tell me what was done, what's left to be done and provide a detailed plan for the next step. Wait for my approval, right? And then at that point on, Lovable would continue to work and revise uh, with me, what is the next thing that should be the thing that we're working on, right? And that's, as you can see here, uh, I actually completed all the steps in the first three phases and now the fourth phase, which is the AI integration. And now we have all of this that remains to be done, which is something that uh, we can cover in tomorrow's video. See you tomorrow.